Previously I showed that for the past 10 years I've been using a Sandy Bridge i7 2600K based system and so far it has served me incredibly well but the time had really come for an upgrade and I had my mind set on Alder Lake as they are by far the most exciting Intel CPUs we've seen in many many years and I also wanted it fully unlocked with the top Z690 chipset but without breaking the bank but could that be possible? Well, I think it is. For now I only want to do a platform upgrade, so I'll be replacing the old motherboard, the CPU, the memory and the cooler. Starting with the CPU and from the Alder Lake lineup, the i5-12600K seemed like a great product. You get 10 cores, 6 performance and 4 efficiency, fully unlocked but stock frequencies are already up to 4.9 gigahertz and to be frank i also couldn't pass up the opportunity to upgrade from a 2600k to a 12600k i got mine for 312 euros as for the memory the prices of ddr5 are pretty ridiculous still unfortunately and the real world performance differences aren't always there especially for most use cases for the i5 which will be gaming so here i've gone for some tried and true ddr4 corsair vengeance lpx 3200c16 with a 2x8 gigabyte kit which of course brings us to a ddr4 motherboard and here the msi pro z690-a ddr4 stood out with four pci express slots four m.2 slots six SATA 600 ports and a quite solid VRM solution. And of course the top Z690 chipset which doesn't have active chipset cooling but rather just a heatsink as I really dislike those chipset fans. And very importantly it's also very affordable. At the time I paid 209 euros for this unit but it also included a 30 euro cashback. Once that comes through it'll only be 179 euros. Now that's a deal. And finally for cooling, I went for a Silencium PC Fira 5 dual fan. I'd read good things about this cooler and at the time it was only very few units with compatibility for LGA 1700 and quite cheap, only 32 euros for this one. Question of course remains, will it be able to cool a i5 12600K? More on that later. As you've been able to see, I already put the system together here to check out if all the components work and I'm glad to report that everything is functional. Overall, the installation was very straightforward. I really like the online video supplied by Silencium PC for the cooler installation, that was great. But if you've ever put together an LGA system in the past, you already be well familiar with the procedure here. And in that regard, not a lot has changed from the days of Sandy Bridge except maybe if you uh, have an M.2 SSD. But overall, very easy, very straightforward. But it's finally time to get this platform into my PC and I really can't wait to tap into the performance of this new chip, so let's get started. Well, I've got the 12600K running in my system here and it is really, really fast. But to quantify that performance, I've also put it through my usual test suite and I've added results from Anantech, from PC World, and from Tech Power Up. For the results from the AMD Ryzen 5000, the previous best mainstream chips. So let's see what those numbers are. Alder Lake has some truly screaming single threaded performance and it keeps the AMD competition pretty far behind in the web test, speedometer, Kraken and Octane. Also in the multi-threaded tests like POV Ray and Cinebench, the extra oomph from the E-cores means the 12600K can even compete with the Ryzen 7 5800X. But not always as demonstrated by the 7-zip compression and decompression tests. 
Compared to the old i7-2600K, it completely wipes the floor with it, being over twice as fast in single-threaded tests and four to five times as fast in multi-threaded benchmarks. As for gaming, in a previous video I already covered the gaming performance of the i5-12600K versus the AMD 5600X, the flagship 5950X, the i9-12900K and the 11900K over 9 reviews average. And the 12600K was impressively fast, outpacing both the 5600X and even the 5950X on average, and around 6% behind the i9-12900K. But at the end of the day, those are all just benchmark numbers, which, while impressive on paper, might not always be indicative of the real-world improvement you'll be seeing for your own use cases. So let's have a look at the improvement I am getting from upgrading to the 12600K from my old Sandy Bridge system. Starting with Battlefield 2042 64 player, using my Gigabyte GTX 1080, and on my i7-2600K, the GPU usage was only around 50%, and the FPS while playable at around 60 wasn't great. But now with the i5-12600K the GPU usage is basically maxed out, and the FPS has doubled to around 120. Moving on to the 128 player variant, the differences are even bigger, going from FPS in the mid 40s now to a maxed out GPU usage at 110 FPS, with an even larger difference in 1% and 0.1% low performance. Next up, a different kind of title, Beam&G Drive. Here it was already nicely playable on the old i7-2600K, but now on older deck it's really buttery smooth, going from 80 on the i7 to 140 on the i5. Onto what was the biggest surprise for me, GTA 4, a notoriously difficult game to run. And on my i7-2600K it already averaged a fair 82 FPS, but now on Alder Lake it just absolutely flies, averaging over 130 FPS, a 60% increase, with a doubling of the 1% and 0.1% low performance, just absolutely insane. And finally, rendering my videos on DaVinci Resolve, the project I had on the rare water-cooled Sapphire X1950 XDX Toxic, on my i7-2600K that took around 14 minutes to complete, but now on the i5-12600K that is nearly three times as fast at only around four minutes. In terms of power and temperatures, the i5-12600K was a lot more frugal than I had expected. On paper this is a 150 watt TDP chip, as per Intel specs, but in the most popular benchmarks I saw I never got over 130 watts or so. And even in a synthetic workload as Prime95, topped out at around 140 or so, which is really quite quite frugal. The Silencio PC Fera 5 here also impressed. Even in Prime95, it topped out at around 78 degrees centigrade, and rendering a video in DaVinci Resolve didn't even top 70. So, yeah, that's a 32 UL air cooler cooling a 150 watt chip as per Intel specs. As for overclocking, the i5 turned out to be really potent as well, but I'll save that for a different video as there is a lot to cover in that area. But at stock it already runs up to 4.9 GHz, up to 2 cores, or an all core load up to 4.5 GHz, with the E cores at up to 3.7, but there is a lot more to be had out of this chip. To conclude, I'm really pleased with this set and overall the balance it strikes between sort of performance and budget, as you don't need a 100 euro all-in-one liquid cooling solution to cool a chip like this, just a 30 euro air cooler, and that is just fantastic. Also the motherboard is pretty nicely equipped for a budget uh, Z690 board, and you get all the features you want. In many ways I think the i5-12600K is a bit of a successor to the i7-2600K, both provided excellent single-threaded performance, had a lot of overclocking headroom, as we'll see in the next video, and you could also cool this chip very easily with a cheap budget air cooler, as I showed in my previous video. It's just a shame that we had to wait 10 years for it. In any case, that was all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to be kept up to date on future projects, why not consider subscribing to the Fully Buffered channel. And if you are thinking of upgrading to Alder Lake, please do leave a comment below with what you are thinking of getting. In any case, that was all for now and bye bye.